It's time to relax, grab a drink, pull up a chair by the hearth, and have a seat in the Skald Circle to listen to the tale of The Suitor from Denmark, as told by Casimir. Before we begin our story, we wanted to remind you that we release new tales for free every week. Our shorter tales release on Wednesdays, and our longer chapter stories release on every other Saturday. Find out where you can hear them on our website at thescaldcircle.com. And be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way, you'll never miss out on one of our enchanting tales from around the world. And this is the tale of the Suitor. There was once a handsome young fellow by the name of Tom. From an old, wealthy uncle, he had inherited a fine farm and was well established in life. He determined to seek a wife. As he was quite wealthy, he considered himself to be able to afford a little more than ordinary people in this direction. For the wives of wealthy men must always be prettier and wiser than those of the poor, as we all know. So Tom wanted a wife who was handsome and industrious, wise and good, and of course, it would not be out of the way if she possessed some property. One day, he rode over to a rich farmer who lived in the neighborhood who had three daughters, all of whom were ready to be married at once. He had seen, although he had never talked with them, and thought well of all three. Now these girls, who were otherwise pretty and good, had one great fault. Namely, they could not talk distinctly. When Tom came riding into the yard, the farmer received him kindly and conducted him into the room where the three girls sat spinning diligently. They nodded kindly to him and smiled, but did not utter a sound, as their mother had strictly forbidden them to do so. The farmer led the talking, while his wife waited on them with good food and drinks. The girls spun and looked at the young man at the table and glanced at each other and at the ceiling and out of the windows, but none of them spoke. At length, one happened to break her yarn. My yarn boat, she exclaimed. Tie it in, advised her sister. Mama told us to say nothing, and we taint deep till, broke in the third. When Tom heard these grown girls talking like babies, he hurried away, utterly shocked. A wife who could not speak distinctly, he had no use for at all. He proceeded to another farm, where they had a daughter who was said to be a very fine girl in all respects. Tom went into the house and saw her. If the first three ones had been too silent, this one talked. However, more fluently and volubly than any girl he had ever met. She talked like a house on fire, while her spinning wheel went more rapidly than any engine. How long does it take you to use up such a head of flax, asked the young man, pointing to the rock. Oh, I use up a couple of them every day. While she'd left the room a few minutes to look after the servants, Tom seized a key from the drawer of the bureau in the room and stuffed it into the head of the flax. When she returned, they finished the conversation, whereupon he bid her parents and herself a goodbye, promising to call again in one week. On the appointed day, Tom returned. The girl and her parents expected him to talk this time of his errand. When he came into the room, the girl was busy with her rock as before. She bid him welcome and invited him to sit down. How unfortunate, she began. We've been missing the key of that bureau ever since you were here. We are unable to find it, and I cannot reach any of my things. It has never happened before. On hearing this, Tom went over and pulled the key out of the head of flax. It was the same key, and still worse, it was the very same head of flax that he had seen a week before. Thus, he knew her word could not be depended upon. And bidding her goodbye, he left at once, richer and experienced than before. Some time afterward, he heard of a girl who was very pretty and good, but especially wise and thoughtful in all practice manners. Her parents were said to be the same. Tom saddled his horse and rode over to see her. The whole family was at home and received the young man very kindly. While the men drifted into a talk about the weather and the crops, the women placed about them the best the house could afford. Go into the cellar and fetch a bottle of wine, said the woman to her daughter. The girl went into the cellar but was so busy thinking of what pattern she might choose for her wedding dress that she sat down on the floor, lost in reflection upon this important subject, and the wine was entirely forgotten. After she had left the room, the parents told Tom of their daughter's many good qualities, how industrious she was, how thoughtful, and so on. The young man thought 
that she would be exactly such a wife as he wished. But the girl did not appear with the wine, and her mother went to see what had become of her. When she went into the cellar and found her daughter sitting on the floor, she asked, Why do you sit there instead of bringing the wine? Well, was the answer, I am thinking that if I marry Tom, I must make a careful choice of the pattern for my wedding gown. The question is, what pattern would be best? Yes, indeed, answered the mother. Which pattern would be the most suitable? She sat down by her daughter and pondered over this important question. I wonder what has become of both of them, at length exclaimed the man, referring to his wife and the daughter. I must look after them. He went into the cellar, and he saw both women sitting on the floor, and he cried out, Why are you both sitting there? You have kept us waiting for over an hour. We are thinking, replied his wife, of the pattern for the wedding gown. If she is to marry Tom, the gown must, of course, be a pretty one, and the choice of the right pattern is indeed an important matter. Oh, to be sure, answered the husband, seating himself on the floor beside them to consider the same subject. At length, Tom grew tired of waiting. He went himself into the cellar to see if anything unusual happened, and he found the whole family sitting on the floor looking extremely thoughtful. Why do you all sit there? he asked. At length, the farmer, aroused from his reverie, proceeded to relate the difficult question which had caught their attention. Ah, yes, indeed, answered Tom. Which will be the most suitable pattern? You may think of that until I return. In the meantime, I will do the same. Goodbye to you. Mounting his horse, he rode home as rapidly as the steed would carry him. And if he has not found another or less thoughtful girl, he is yet to be a bachelor. But the three people may yet still be sitting on the cellar floor, thinking of the pattern for the bridal gown, for all that I know. And that is the tale of the suitor from Denmark. Thank you for listening to our story. If you enjoyed it, we recommend taking a look at our Patreon page, as noted in the description below. You can earn great rewards while also supporting us, to keep these stories alive for generations to come. Also, remember to subscribe to us on your podcast app, and leave us a five-star rating if you enjoyed this story. A special thank you to Cat for their support this month. Without your contribution, we wouldn't be able to continue these stories, and we truly appreciate it. Visit thescaldcircle.com to stay up to date with all of our current events, news, and much more. Not only that, but you can also visit our story archive of every tale we have ever told. It's sorted by origin and region for the convenience of your listening pleasure. Thank you for listening to our story. <laughs>